You are who you are either because of how you grew up or in spite of how you grew up. The truth is you can choose to keep on living the life that you currently are living or you can choose to do better. Decisions that you continue to keep making on a daily basis are the ones that will dictate your future. And if you choose to keep living the life that you're currently living and you don't choose to improve your life and you don't choose to make better decisions, eventually you're probably going to be stuck in the same spot that you have been for years and that's how you get in a rut and that's how you just stay poor or stay unhappy or stay fat or stay lonely because you choose to do those things and I know that depression and anxiety are real things I've struggled with them myself I currently still struggle with some of that stuff so I'm not saying that there isn't other factors that come into play on this you could be a victim of circumstance but at some point in your life you got to take action to do better things and I think about all of my circumstances and I think about some of my shortcomings and I think about how I grew up and I use those things now to make sure that I steer in the right direction and don't fall back into those things because I want to be a better person and I want to have a better life and I want my family to have a better life. My mom was a recovering addict and I dealt with a lot of stuff that most kids who have a good family or a good upbringing don't necessarily have to deal with. I had kind of a rough life. I grew up in a single parent household and and I know what it's like to grow up without a dad. And what's crazy is where I grew up, a lot of us grew up without a father. So now I make sure that I'm very involved in my kids' lives. I make sure that I spend a lot of time with them. I make sure that I'm always there and I am that father that I wish I would have had. And I do my best and obviously we all have struggles and we all deal with shit. If you're someone who is in fact a good parent or trying to be a better parent than the one that you had or the ones that you were missing, then you should relate to the things I'm saying right now. And it's that not having a father has motivated me to try to be the best father that I can be. And I just use that as motivation to do better and to make sure that my kids have a good father in their life. Another thing that I use to keep me motivated and keep me on the straight and narrow is my struggles with addiction throughout my life and growing up with the parent who was a recovering addict. I use that to make sure that I stay away from all those bad addictions that I have and that I try to replace them with good healthy habits. And I want to make sure that I am not an addict and my kids don't have to grow up witnessing me as an addict because that's hard. It's really difficult to deal with that stuff when you're a kid and when you're an addict you're not present you're not in the current moment and I want to make sure that I don't let my addictions take over my life and have me neglect things that I need to take care of like my health and my mental health and my family I want to make sure that those things that impacted me a lot as a child growing up and those nights that were really rough for me as a kid and having to deal with a lot of that trauma that came from that stuff is not something that I pass on to my kids because I myself can't cope with a lot of my own issues and seek different things to take my mind off of stuff through addiction. So I do my best to stay away from the things that I've been addicted to. I try not to drink as much as I used to, but at one point in time in my life, I was doing drugs and drinking every single day. And it was when I was younger and it was before I had children, but I've had my times where I fall off the deep end and I drink a little bit more than I should and I fall off the wagon and I'm constantly trying to improve on that. Uh, we're all human, we all make mistakes, but as long as you're recognizing those mistakes that you're making, and you're trying to do better and you're trying to improve those things. It's all about making small steps in the right direction and eventually you'll get to where you want to be. I'm not going to cue the sad music here. I'm just kind of sharing my, my thoughts. We're lacking that a lot now. I see it in my comments a lot and I see that a lot of people feel like they're hungry for this kind of stuff and to see someone who's on YouTube talking about these things, who was able to turn his life around, who was able to make some good decisions and to know that like I still deal with a lot of shit is going to help people out there because I know that I have been helped by listening to other people share their stories so I just want to share mine. All right, let me not go off topic here. Growing up poor makes me want to be rich, emotionally and financially. I grew up not in the worst circumstances. There was people that I knew that definitely had it worse than I did, but I grew up in the inner city. I grew up in a small efficiency apartment in the back of my grandmother and uncle's duplex. And me and my mother shared a small studio with one bedroom and my bedroom was the living room till I was 17 years old. My whole life I lived in that back 
half of this duplex. It wasn't big. It was it was kind of run down because my mom, although she tried to make it as nice as possible, eventually I grew up and I was a mess and I was a dirty little ghetto kid who had dirty little ghetto kid friends who would come over and wreck the place and when I became a teenager, I destroyed that place. There was graffiti on the walls in my living room. Everything was dirty and I lived in really shitty circumstances because I didn't know any better and I was a kid and I, I made it worse and my mom couldn't keep up. I want to make sure that I'm self-aware and I want to make sure that I'm happy and I'm working towards being happy and working on the things that make me a better person and make me emotionally mature as an adult because I am not an emotionally mature adult according to you know therapy sessions that I've had and I'm working on that. I'm working on being financially mature and doing better because being poor is not just financial circumstance. It's a lot of other things. There's a lot of mentality that goes behind being poor. He said poor is a mentality. You may not have a lot, but you don't have to be poor. I mentioned that I'm a high school dropout, and I think I've mentioned it a few times, but probably in older videos. I was held back in the sixth grade, and then I dropped out in ninth grade. So I repeated sixth grade, um, not because I was stupid. I was actually a really smart kid. In the third grade, I was in advanced classes. I was in gifted classes, and I even won the math bowl, the regional Miami area math bowl. It was uh, hundreds of kids there, and I, and I took first place for math comprehension. But when I got to like fifth grade and I started to become more of a victim of my surroundings and I seeked acceptance from my peers. Unfortunately, my peers were gangbangers and drug dealers and criminals because I grew up in a bad area. I grew up in Little Havana and Alapata in the 90s and it was rough. Since I was dealing with a lot of shit at home and I was dealing with a lot of problems, I went out and I seeked acceptance from people because I, that's just what you do when you're a kid and then you gravitate towards people that are similar to you. Like I said, a lot of my friends didn't have dads. A lot of my friends were in poverty. A lot of my friends struggled with parents who were addicts or parents that just weren't there. I had friends that were raised by their grandparents because their mother and father were dead or in jail or on drugs on the street. And like, this was my reality at the time. And realizing like now that I had a lot of potential when I was a kid and then I failed those grades and then I dropped out of school, that stuff motivates me now to try to be as smart as I can be. There's a mental plasticity. I'm probably butchering that, but it's basically that your brain can change and you can learn more and you can become smarter. If you're healthy and your brain's healthy and your body's healthy, you can make changes to be better. And I constantly am trying to prove to myself now that I can be smarter. And I think I've, I've done a pretty good job considering where I came from and how I grew up. The fact that I learned how to code, the fact that I'm doing things that I never thought I'd be doing. I, and the fact fact that I deprived myself of an education because of decisions that I made as a teenager and those choices have always kind of haunted me because I always thought, man, what if I would have done better and stayed in school and stayed in advanced classes and I didn't start screwing around and messing up like I did, who knows where I could be now, but I, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out because a lot of those things made me the person that I am today. Getting arrested and being involved in a lot of crime and bad shit when I was younger makes me want to be a better person now. It makes me want to make sure that I am a good role model for my kids. It makes me want to give back and I have a lot of plans uh, for doing that. I'm, I'm coming up with different ideas. I'm just not in the position right now where I can do those things. I came across a group called Underdog Devs and I want to give them a shout out because they help people out who were formerly incarcerated or came from poverty areas and I see a lot of organizations that do cool stuff like Free Code Camp. I'm always shouting them out and I had somebody mention like, oh, you're sponsored by them. No, they're a nonprofit organization. They're 100% free. They're open source. They help people from all over the world learn how to code. The organizer is a really cool guy. Quincy Larson. I, I actually had the pleasure of chatting with him when I first started my YouTube channel and I'm hoping to have him on and I'm hoping to raise more awareness around good organizations and people who are doing good and I'm hoping that eventually I can do some good myself. I'm going to read this last part here because I've kind of given all the examples of like things that I've done and have made me want to do better and they, I use those things as motivation but I want to just say one thing. You don't need to accept your reality. 
you can change it. You can't change or take back things that you've done or things that have happened to you. But you can make sure to do better moving forward by avoiding mistakes that you've made in your past and using them to make better decisions in your future. Do better. Many of us don't realize that we can do a lot better and I never want to be a motivational guru. I'm not trying to do that with these videos. I share my story and talk about my experiences and talk about the shit that goes on in my head and things that I think of and put it on tape because if one person watches this and it helps them improve, then I think it's worth it. The closer I got to the bigger numbers and the bigger following, the more I felt like I needed to start talking about stuff like this. This stuff right here is, is something that you can use to shift your mindset. There is a lot of power in the way that you think. If you think you're a piece of shit, you're gonna be a piece of shit. If you think that you can be a better person, you're gonna start becoming a better person, and I've noticed that over the years. All right, with all that said, this video is probably gonna be way too long, and I don't know. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.